Welcome back to the channel guys. I'm Chase, 3C Mini Works, and we have a lot to cover today. Quite the story to share with you guys what just happened. Quite the story to share with you guys on what just happened recently when I sold the Helix. If you guys saw the first video that I made of this build process for the Egrom, you'll know that I sold my Honda Ruckus Helix swap bike. As fate would have it, I met this guy on a pouring day and I never ride in the rain. At any rate, he wrecked the bike. Legit, he wrecked the bike in the parking lot. I could not believe it. And I know what you're thinking at this point. You're like, oh yeah, you got paid. You're good. Nope. I was the dummy that didn't take his money first. So it really could have went horribly, but I just couldn't believe it. I was hesitant to even tell you guys because I didn't have it on camera. I stopped recording. As I got to the gas station, I put my helmet down and I turned the camera off. Just, you know, respect his privacy, that kind of thing. And oh God, I cannot believe it. Man, I turned around and I was kind of stretching at the gas pump trying to dry out my jacket because I was soaked and all of a sudden I hear this big crash and a long scrape and I look back and this dude's just laying on the ground next to my bike laying on the ground I'm like I, at this point I keel over I'm like how do I process this what's going to happen because at this point he could just jump in his car and run away and I just be boned like there's nothing I could do about it he came back the whole left side of the bike was scraped up and kind of disgusting looking and he's like, yeah, you know, it looks it looks decent. And I said, yeah, you know, I just kind of played along because I'm in shock at this point. And then he proceeds to hand me an envelope that's all bloody. <laughs> and I'm like, man, I just got disease or something, but I don't care. I got my money. It's your bike now. Good luck. So that happened. At any rate, we are out on the last ride for the Grom. It is now fall and I'm putting this away in my warehouse. So we're getting one last good ride in before we get tucked in for winter. We've made a lot of awesome progress on the Egrom. So far this week, we were able to get it off the lift and kind of roll it around. And it's pretty much like a one of those pedal strider bikes now, but only Grom size, so it's really fun. I've just been rolling it around the driveway with my daughter and she loves it. It's crazy how light they are when they don't have a motor or anything in it. But yeah, we cut the bracketry for the motor and the battery. And we're just kind of waiting to see once we actually get the battery in it's gonna come from china so it's coming by boat and they said it'd take four to eight weeks so we're gonna look for probably january or so to actually get this thing out of the garage but at least for now i'm cutting all the templating making sure tolerances work it's come a long way in a really short time i'm really happy with it i think now we're gonna get into the nitty-gritty of how low can I get because I want that low slow feel without being able to drag when I turn and it is very low. We're looking at about two inch ground clearance below the battery and that's with my headlight buried into my fender so I don't think it'll go any farther than that. Two inches is really low <laughs> but I also go back to the old car scene when we drove around pretty much with the frame on the road and while it's a little different because you have four wheels, I don't know that it'll be that big of a deal. I just more so have to watch tolerances and turnings. We just have to make sure I have good lean angles and we should be good. If worst case, I'll raise it up. I might actually lower the rear slightly just to give it a less raked look. But once I get the plastics on, I'll be able to actually see that more accurately. I feel like motorcyclists as a whole probably largely suffer from seasonal depression. <laughs> Unless you're riding year round, which that's depressing too, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, once I put the bikes away, it's just kind of sadness until spring comes. So we'll see if the building of these bikes in the interim through the off season can help with that a little bit. But uh, hopefully we can share that depression together and then be happy again because small bikes, goodness, even through the off season. I don't know. I'm hopeful. Man, I love fall. It's so beautiful, especially when riding a bike. I don't know, just the leaves and everything. You do gotta watch if there's coating on the road with the leaves and the wetness, so the leaves trap below them, but normally roads are pretty clear. I know some of the side roads I was riding on this morning were not the best, <laughs> so you gotta be careful of that. But just to take in the splendor of what's around, I mean, it's, it's beautiful once leaves start to turn, colors change. We are gonna have to make quite a few adjustments with the battery and the motor just to make sure everything fits all nice and neat, kind of tucked in there how we want it but I went ahead and did a slightly smaller battery than what I talked about in my last video. Reason being is because it'll allow me to completely stick the battery inside the plastics. So personally, I would rather have range. However, when I brought up the idea of how big the battery was gonna be to my friends and my peers and 
people that just bounced ideas off of to see what other opinions were of the community, the general perspective was that if the battery overhangs the plastics, it's not going to look good. And I could see that. Personally, I don't really mind it, but I could definitely hear that argument to say, hey, you're gonna be chopping the plastics, it's gonna look gross. So what I'm gonna do is maximize the size of battery that I can fit inside the plastics. And I'll use that for my demo bike so that I can kind of test range on that and get a kit out for those that want the electric swap. It'll be cheaper because it's a smaller battery. And then likewise, it'll also appease those people that want the aesthetic look uh, without having that plastic. So that'll be nice. And then once I get that nailed down and production in the way of those and the bracketry and all that, then I'll make a second kit with the extended range. Another thing that we have to do is weigh the bikes. We essentially need to find out how much a normal frame is versus with the engine versus the 300 swap. I just basically want to see what people are running on the stock frame without modifying it because I want this to be a bolt up kit. So I don't want to have to tell people, hey, you have to modify the frame. And I know that 300 swaps are very, very common. I'm riding one right now. It handles the weight. I've never heard of any frame buckling or anything like that. So that allows me to get a safe baseline for how much weight I can truly put on the bike before it's a concern of liability. Obviously, I'm not trying to put anyone in danger. So we're just going to avoid that altogether and make sure we get weights. And then that's going to be my max capacity. So rather than limiting how big a battery can go to what can fit, I'm limiting it based on how much weight the frame can safely hold because ultimately safety is paramount when riding a motorcycle. So we'll see how it goes. It's coming together really nice. Everyone needs to own electric. If you've not ridden electric in some capacity, make sure you do it. Ask me, ask a friend, figure it out because it's amazing. At any rate, we'll see you guys on the next video. Have the best day ever. Bye-bye.